Hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we will be playing the Italian tier 9 premium destroyer Paolo Emilio on the map Northern Waters in the Domination Game Mode. Before we start I want to say thank you to everyone who left a like under my last video about Smallland. The overall feedback was really positive and I've gained a lot of subscribers by my standards. So yeah, thank you very much for the support. It means a lot to me and I hope I can provide you with more entertaining videos in the future. Alright, about today's match, here's a little disclosure. Some of the things you are about to witness are only explicable to me because it was an early morning match and some people were in a, let's say, special state of mind. I'm at a loss for words regarding some of the upcoming events and honestly, this match is in no shape or form typical of what you should expect from your average Paolo Emilio match, at least from my experience. In fact, I still need to get used to her, I've just recently acquired her with research points and as you can see she's by far my weakest tier 9 destroyer, although in my defense I haven't played that many games in her. Therefore, my recommended commander skills and upgrades are nothing but mere suggestions. I think Jack of all trades is useful to help with the long cooldowns on your smoke and engine boost and expert marksman aids in bringing down that horrible turret traverse to a more acceptable level, but these points could also be invested in AFT. That way you wouldn't feel so useless when your gimmicks are reloading, because Paolo Emilio's default firing range isn't anything special. And since she's such a massive, clumsy ship for a destroyer, even with the Propulsion Mod 1 upgrade, open water gunboating without AFT leaves you very vulnerable to return fire. Apart from that, I would definitely build her for guns, the SAP hits like a truck and reducing the reload time on her torpedoes doesn't really benefit Paolo because most of the times you can't use them without your consumables anyway due to their lack of range. One more note about the upgrades, engine boost mod 1 for the second slot is a no-brainer if you can afford it and depending on your playstyle it might be worth replacing Torpedo Tubes Mod 1 with Aiming Systems Mod 1 in the third slot if you play her more like an open water gunboat. But in my opinion the Torpedo upgrade emphasizes her YOLO capabilities since it makes the torpedoes slightly faster and also less susceptible to being disabled. So less than 3 minutes into the game, the enemies have suffered their first casualty. For some reason the Fletcher decided to fight me in open waters, a fight I will happily take and after losing 90% of her HP she decided that this engagement is not very favorable and smoked up only to get finished by an airborne torpedo. I decided to use one of my fuel smoke consumables as well, since the enemy Richthofen was approaching me with armor-piercing rocket planes. While they are not the most effective weapon versus destroyers, Paolo Emilio is easy to hit due to her sheer size and the broadside hit can result in 5-6k damage taken, so I definitely wanted to avoid that. The CV is solely targeting me for now and the enemy surface ships are more than willing to shoot me when I'm spotted. The enemy Des Moines is approaching Alpha as well, so it seems really unlikely that I can get the cap under these circumstances. My smoke is obviously on cooldown and it doesn't help versus radar anyway. I could hang around here for spotting, but other than bleeding HP and wasting my consumables for defensive measures, I don't think I would accomplish much here. With my support hanging quite far back and the Friesland apparently struggling in Bravo, I decide staying here would be a waste of time, there's no point in sacrificing your ship for a cap, especially not during the early game. Maybe I can assist our Friesland in Bravo with the Halland, because it looks like she's having trouble with getting rid of the Swedish tier 10 destroyer on her own. Usually Halland vs Friesland should be a relatively one-sided fight in favor of the Friesland, 
But who knows, maybe the Holland is also built for guns and with her having access to the repair party consumable, the odds are stacked against our Friesland the longer the fight goes on. After roughly five minutes we've already lost our second ship, looks like there was an intense brawl going on on the 10 line. But the good news are the enemy team is about to lose their Alsace as well, so the match is still relatively even. The Charlie cap is the only cap that is generating points right now and fortunately it's ticking in our favor. The Charlie side is more or less our strong side at the moment and I'm wondering how long it will take the enemy team to realize that there is not much preventing them from taking Alpha eventually. Bravo is still contested, the Halland seems to be really determined to take it. I hope our Friesland can keep her occupied without dying until I finally arrive. In spite of her determination, I was not really expecting the Halland to just sit behind the rock in the cap. In fact, I was expecting her coming towards me so she could get an angle on the Friesland, so all my guns are still oriented towards my port side. The Halland, however, decided that sitting nose in in the cap with a Hydro DD and a Severe round was the best choice, so we conceal our approach by using our exhaust smoke generator and kill the Halland shortly after her taking our torpedo from our Richthofen. The Bravo cap is now secured, but ship wise, once again, the enemy team is trading kinda evenly with us since they've killed our Hipper in the meantime and both teams have lost 3 ships each. My team probably got the more important kills though, getting rid of DDs is especially important for Paolo Emilio since she's outspotted by basically any other destroyer and although the problem of CV spotting still remains and there's also still a Kitakaze left, every dead DD brings us closer to unleashing our full YOLO potential. The enemies have now pushed into Alpha and by looking at our defensive line near Alpha, composed of a Kansas, a Yoshino and a Venezia, I'm already concerned that my CV will be exposed to the enemy push sooner or later if she doesn't move, so I tell her to get back. Don't get me wrong, both Venezia and Yoshino are perfect kiting ships and in skilled hands only one of them can be enough to stall an entire push, but I'm under the impression that both of them are not very experienced players or arguably not very good at the game, so I'm pretty sure that our A flank will collapse completely in a few minutes and this will leave our CV at risk. Speaking of CVs, our friend, the enemy Richthofen is back at harassing us. We take a nasty hit from the Hindenburg here and there's also an angry smoke cloud directly in front of us. Luckily the smoke is about to dissipate and reveals a low health Kitakaze which immediately goes down after being spotted. Although I have been obviously spotted myself, I'm sensing a chance here for my first torpedo YOLO attempt. There's this juicy full health North Carolina on the B line. And all that stands between me and her is a lone Atago Black. So before I can lay hands on my prey, we need to get rid of the Japanese tier 8 cruiser. Since she's still relatively healthy, there's no point in engaging her in an open water gun duel, but I can keep her spotted for my lion. By the looks of it, she's about to make a full turn, probably to launch her starboard side torpedoes in classic fashion. And with a small island ahead of me, even I can get a few salvos in myself before I duck into cover. This is just 3 damage, especially when considering that most of her slow turning turrets are still facing to the other side immediately after the turn. You can tell by my camera movement that I was a little bit surprised that I stayed spotted for longer than expected, even with the island between me and the Atago, but it was just that my ship was not fully covered by the island as soon as I'm completely behind it. I go undetected and the Atago went dark as well, and what else other than the Atago and the NC would be able to spot me here? So the Atago is slowly but surely worn down. Unfortunately the NC is also bleeding HP. I was hoping for a clean devastating strike on a full health BB, 
But with the situation on the other side of the map in mind, I shouldn't be complaining about my teammates dealing as much damage as they can. As it was to be expected, our Kansas was the first victim of the enemy push. Our CV still hasn't moved. We killed the Atago in return after she took a big hit from our Lion. Sorry for a kill securing Lion, but I couldn't wait any longer for my torpedo rush. Curiously enough, the and she was not targeting me, although I was steaming towards her in plain sight. She's probably still stuck in binocular views, shooting at someone else, but I decide it's better to be safe than sorry, so I use my exhaust smoke and my engine boost while closing the distance. The NC goes dark and it would have been better to go more to the left to cut off the possible escape route of the North Carolina, but once I was committed, I decided to not touch my rudder again, to not lose any speed until my smoke runs out or I'm within the assured acquisition range of two kilometers. The NC is definitely targeting me now, but she has other problems to worry about aside from hitting me. Her turrets can't keep up with my speed and on top of that she's turning away from my torpedoes instead of turning in. Not really sure if it would have made a difference, but this way she ensures to take at least 4 torpedoes and 3 are already enough to kill her. Honestly, if you use your gimmicks correctly and everything works out as planned, Paolo Emilio is probably the most satisfying ship to use in World of Warships. There's really no better experience than death striking a battleship at point blank range. However, this NC was merely a bystander when it comes to the outcome of the match and although we were briefly ahead in points and ships, by looking at the minimap you can tell that our CV is in trouble and the rest of my team is slowly collapsing. The match is still perfectly winnable though, as long as our Richthofen is alive she's slowly dragging the enemies away from the caps and right now there's only this lone Hindenburg that's trying to play the objectives. I was considering to reset her, but luckily she slid out of the cap in an attempt to dodge the AP volley of our Lion. But in general you don't want to take fights with cruisers that have short shell travel times like Hindenburg, Zao, Moskva and so on. Unless they are distracted or at your max range, Paolo is a massive target that handles like a brick, even with the engine boost consumable active. In theory you have 60mm of side plating that can shatter all cruiser HE in the game, but people just need to aim and hit you above the waterline or basically any other part of the ship to get full HE penetrations. Except your turrets and cunning tower, these parts also have some armor that's unusual for a DD. Although Paolo has the second highest HP pool for a DD in the game after Harugumo, you can lose your hit points very quickly when you're playing recklessly and unlike French DDs, Paolo's mid section can't be saturated so people will always get full damage when they shoot the upper part of your hull. So in the meantime we lost our Friesland and our CV. The match is now looking a lot tighter than a few minutes ago, but I knew the inevitable was about to happen and took preventive measures. I'm trying to get to the alpha cap to get some additional points for my team as fast as I can. And while the Hindenburg is busy fighting our Holland and our Lion, I'm throwing some SAP shells at her as well with moderate success. Another ship goes down, which turns the game into a 3 vs 6 and the sad part is that I'm about to telegraph my location to the enemy CV by capturing Alpha. Not that my position would have been a mystery anyway, but I have no other choice than trying to take it. But we are in for a surprise. <laughs> yeah, Look who we have here. I have no idea what's going on. There's not a single reason the Richthofen should be sitting here stationary. She had all the warning time in the world in advance to turn around and she should be moving at least by now. But there's no reaction, no plane, so we will just run at her at full speed. For some reason I saw her AP bombers over the Charlie cap a little more than one minute ago, so she must have been playing and I distinctly remember her harassing me earlier. 
And yeah, look, there are her AP bombers again on the B line. And if you keep paying attention to them, you will notice that they will be coming towards me. I have absolutely no clue what's happening, but there's no time to lose. I will even leave Alpha before capturing it. I want this kill so badly right now. And I'm using my exhaust smoke while closing the distance, so I don't get farmed by secondaries. While we are approaching the Richthofen, we can take our time and have another look at the minimap. The Halland and the Lion are doing an excellent job in delaying the enemies. They still haven't taken Bravo. Inevitably, our Lion is about to pay the price for her brave defending, but so is the enemy CV. Cool guys don't look at explosions, they say, but at this point I already decided that this match is going to be uploaded on YouTube. So we take a quick last glance at the sinking wreck of the Richthofen, but now it's time to focus again. We still have a massive uphill battle ahead of us. The comedy, or should I say madness, doesn't end here though. It looks like the Richthofen is going to attack us with her remaining AP dive bombers. And because I know that I'm about to get spotted, I decide to not go directly towards the cap because I don't want to be closer to the Rhone, as I already am as long as I'm lit. The bombers, however, just pass peacefully above us and continue their journey to no man's land. Don't ask me what's going on. Maybe the guy is just enjoying the scenery or his or her child has taken over the keyboard, but I'm not gonna complain. Still, the enemy team has the point and most definitely the ship lead. I have no idea how much hit points our Halland has left, but there are still roughly 4 minutes left on the clock, so not all hope is lost, since the point difference is surprisingly small. If I were the Rhone, I would go directly towards me instead of going behind that island, not really sure what her thought process is, but this way she gives me a chance to take the alpha cap uncontested. I don't know what to expect here. Will the Rhone double back or just come through the narrow gap between the two big islands? Is she coming at all? All I know is that we need a kill right now and to have a chance to kill her I need to be close, but not so close that my exact location is potentially spoiled by her hydro. While I'm trying to figure out what to do here, our Halland manages to kill the Hindenburg, which lessens the pressure to make a play a little bit, but if the Halland dies or the Rhone pushes me out of the cap before I can take it and just keeps walking at me, we would lose regardless. I'm telling my Halland in the chat that we have a chance of winning this and I need her to stay alive. Still no sign of the Rhone though and only a few more seconds until I can secure the cap. After getting the cap I should probably just run away and try to reset the Rhone as often as possible without dying if she tries to retake it and I can only hope that neither the Thunderer nor the NC have gone south of Alpha so I don't get boxed in. But here comes the German cruiser. She's actually so close to me that I'm detected. So I'm dropping some panic torps, activate my exhaust smoke and my engine boost and steam away from her at full speed. I only need to make sure that I'm not within 7.1 kilometers as soon as my smoke expires. So I can afford to turn a little bit to use all my guns. My torpedoes are looking quite good, but there's no way the cruiser with the most powerful hydroacoustic surge in the game catches all my tops, right? And even if she doesn't have hydro, she would not go in a straight line after being this close to a destro- <laughs> After being this close to a destroyer, right? <laughs> Madness, just pure madness. This is what you get when you play a game after 3 a.m. Now that we have a distinct lead, I'm definitely expecting my Halland to throw away her ship any second now. Although me and some other guy in the chat have been begging her for over a minute now to run away, she's still dangerously close to the Des Moines in the Charlie camp. But maybe I'm not fair here. Maybe she felt the need to make a play just as urgently as I did because she can't know how capable or incapable the DD on the other side of the map is. Either way, with one minute left on the clock, my hands are tied regarding Halland's fate. 
I don't think we can lose here if not both of us die. I'm shooting at the NC because why not? I'm running the Juliet Charlie flags and in spite of some myths you absolutely cannot detonate when you have these flags equipped. The NC has exactly two reloads in the remaining time and there's no way she can kill me with two salvos. So I might as well shoot, farm some defending ribbons and try to break 200k damage here. She's gonna get a few hits, but it's not a big deal. Even my Helen seems to be disengaging now. I assume she had a good game as well. We get lucky and get a fire on the NC and she's kind enough to let it burn, so we might be able to break 200k until the timer runs out. That's honestly good sportsmanship and marksmanship by the North Carolina. I think I gave her a compliment after this battle. 3, 2, 1. 200k game over. What a ride. Three devastating strikes, Kraken unleashed, high caliber, 24 defended ribbons. This was by far the best battle I had in Paolo Emilio. 3400 base XP, a pretty crazy amount of experience, but the enemy team really played into our hands to make this result possible. The detailed report shows that we only needed to get a little bit more damage on the Halland to get Confederate as well, but unfortunately she ate an airborne torpedo before we killed her. Last but not least, an absurd amount of credits earned, but most of our earnings are obviously based on the fact that I was basically using every single special flag in the game. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I can't help but making these outros. Although I know only 10% of my viewers watches them and they are dragging down my average view time, but I enjoy making them for some reason and isn't Paolo Emilio a gorgeous looking ship? I also think they provide a good opportunity to conclude the video and to say thank you very much for watching. Thanks for the support, thanks for the likes and the feedback in general and if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. I hope to catch you in my next video. See you soon.